All right, how's it going y'all? Today we're gonna to be going over how to set up an offsite backup for a Mac using Backblaze. Basically what this does is it uses Backblaze's software to automatically backup your Mac to their servers and basically keeps any file versions for 30 days and it's all pretty much unlimited. Any USB drives that are plugged in and everything on the Mac is all for one flat fee. It is only six bucks a month and honestly for an offsite backup like this, it is a really great price point. It also has some really great features. People who have watched this channel a few times know I really like Backblaze. And though this video is not sponsored by Backblaze at all, I do have an affiliate link in the description below, so that helps me out. But overall, Backblaze is a great company and they've got some really great utilities to help get your data back. For example, you can get shipped a USB drive with all of your data instead of having to wait for it all to download. And if you return it, it's free. It is a really great process and they make all of this really easy. They have a great Mac client that automatically backs up everything and you keep all of your data for 30 days, which is really important for the possibility of getting cryptoed. I know Macs have not been hit with that many crypto viruses, but it is still a real chance. And by ensuring you have an offsite backup of all your data that lasts for at least 30 days, that means that all of your files can be encrypted and you can immediately go, oh, no, 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 and basically get all of them back without having to pay that ransomware. And honestly, by making sure you've got good backups and not paying people who are crypto-ing NASAs and computers, you are kind of helping in that cycle because you're stopping them from making money. Another thing that's really great is you can basically throw your laptop away and get everything back all without really having to think about it. It's really important for backups to be completely automatic and kind of honestly dummy proof. And that's one of the real advantages of using something like Backblaze. It just runs in the background and handles everything for you. They've got good throttling options so you don't take up all of your upload speed of your bandwidth and you can kind of set it exactly how you'd like it. And overall, I really like the company across the board and I would highly recommend their services. And so honestly, setting up is incredibly easy. I've got a link in the description for this and you just go into personal backup. And I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll all the way down because I've already got an account and I'm going to hit download for Mac. All right, and so it downloaded the EXE, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it and run it. And right here, we're just gonna go ahead and double click on it. All right, and so it's saying, hey, it's not signed. We'll go ahead and open it. And it does have to access all of your folders, which is one thing, but obviously has to do that because it's a backup program. And so you can see right here, I've already got my account information in there. And so it already works for that, but you might have to sign up. All right, and now it's just going through and doing the regular installer things. All right, and so now it's actually going through and showing us how to give it full disk access. I think we should be able to just go into system preferences, security and privacy, privacy, Scroll all the way down to full disk access. All right, and so you can see right here, it's actually already in there, but if it did not show up there, you just follow these instructions, drag the application in there. And so first we just got to unlock it and give it full disk access, which makes sense because it's a backup program. Anytime you give something full disk access, you should think about for a quick second, does it need full disk access? If it's a backup software for your entire computer, it needs full disk access. And now it should have full disk access. All right, and so now we should be able to just go ahead and open up the preferences, which are actually in system preferences. And it's going to go ahead and start the backup just that easily. It is honestly really impressive how easily that works. And it just kind of flies through everything. And it's now backed up. Let's go ahead and go through our settings and make sure we have exactly what we'd like. You've got your name for the computer. And you've also got this interesting folder, temporary drive data. And so this is where it's got to stick data before it's uploaded. And so you can select that, or if you've got an external hard drive that's always hooked up to your computer, you can choose that as well. There's notifications there. And if you wanted to back up an external hard drive that was hooked up to your computer, you would just add that as well. For performance, we can have throttling, or we can also set up manual throttling. So you can say exactly how many megabytes per second, or in this case, kilobytes, you would like to upload. So if you've got like 10 megabit internet, you can use 
and you say you want to use only 10% of it, you can set it to that. It is one thing that you do need to remember. They have a great math here that actually tells you how many gigabytes per day you're going to be able to upload. And so if you really throttle it down, it can be a very slow and just say, say you have a terabyte of a hard drive that is going to be 200 days at five gigabytes per second. But this is totally based off of your upload speed. And so what I would do is the first time set it to something like, I don't know, maybe five megabits. And then from there, that's the one that's going to take the most amount of time. All the other ones are just going to be incremental backups. And so they're not going to take nearly as long. But it doesn't matter if it's interrupted or anything like that. It just handles it all on its own. And so you don't have to worry about that too much. You can also have a great schedule here. You can say, okay, I only want to do it once per day or just whenever I set it. You can say, hey, I don't want to add these files in here. And then under security, you can actually set up your own encryption key if you choose to use that instead of theirs. And so that way it's what's used for encryption. And so that way you know Backblaze has absolutely no idea what your data is and cannot know what your data is. And then it's just got some reports right here that show you everything that's going on. It's honestly really easy and really straightforward. Backblaze will just do it all for you and it'll just be really easy. This is all pretty much set up automatically and now we can just go ahead and click okay. And now it's just going to start backing up. We can also look through restore options and we've got a few different options here. We can go ahead and get that USB drive sent to our house to get all the data in one fell swoop, or we can also do the web download. So now let's go ahead and check out what options we've got in the actual store. So we'll go back to our web browser and we'll check out personal backup, my account. And we can see right here that we've got all the files that are being backed up and you can see everything. You can even go ahead and click restore files and you can choose the method. Right now, I don't have anything here because, well, it's still halfway through the backup and so nothing's done there, but you've got all these different options here for, hey, for whatever reason, you might need to put it in B2. This could be a great option if your computer gets cryptoed and you wanna make sure you've got a snapshot, send it all to B2 and make sure it's there. And that way you have a good copy of your data and also get it sent. They also allow you to have the download. So if you just needed a few files, you go through, select the exact files you needed, and it will create a zip folder for you and have them downloaded. And that way it takes up as little space as possible and as little download time as possible. It's got a ton of options here and you can even decide to share some files. It is really easy, but that does end up going into the B2 pricing if you start sharing files from here. There's also this locate my computer and it will tell you exactly where it is, which is really interesting. Basically it takes the IP address that connected to it and then go ahead and say, okay, this is that IP address. That means it's in this general location. They also have an option here for, Hey, if your computer gets stolen, Backblaze will apparently work with the police to kind of say, okay, these are the IP addresses it was used and things like that, which is a really great add on feature that doesn't really cost them anything extra. I mean, it's just logging the IP addresses but it gives you that kind of peace of mind and could really help in a scenario like that. And then you can also go into preferences here as well and set up some of the other options. And honestly, that's all there is to it. Just leave it running in the background. And once your first backup completes, all the other incremental backups will probably happen about real time, especially if you're not doing tons of modifications. This is a great service because it's also completely incremental backups. That means every time you change a file, Backblaze goes, okay, let's back up, let's back up. And so your computer is always fully backed up to the cloud and that way it just gives you so much better peace of mind. It is really easy to set up and I think it's got a great price point. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.